Lafayette University. Well, I would like to welcome you tonight. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, in this 16th presentation in the uh, Presidential Lecture Series. Uh, at this time, I'd like to welcome all of our distinguished guests here this evening. Uh, Dr. Helen J. Whitney, our acting president. Dr. John Peterson, Assistant Vice President for Graduate Studies Sponsored Programs and Research. <laughs> Dr. Don Flatt, the Chairperson of the UOG Faculty Union. <laughs> Jesse J. Kinger, President of the Student Government Association. <laughs> Anthony Kenneth, uh, Student uh, Regent in the UOG Board of Regents. Dr. Hiro Kurashina, Director Emeritus. <laughs> Dr. Rebecca Stephenson, Professor Emerita. <laughs> the Honorable uh, Benjamin J. F. Cruz, Vice Speaker of the 32nd World Legislature. The Honorable Bayani Maniben, Consul General, Consul of the Philippines. <laughs> Representing Taipei Economic and Cultural Office, First Secretary Mike Liu. <laughs> Mrs. Tessie Marcos, President of the University of the Philippines Alumni Association. Mr. Joe Kinetta, Director of Guam Preservation Trust. <laughs> Dr. Kimberly Keeling, Director of Guam Council of the Arts and Humanities Agency. <laughs> and uh, former Senator Hope Cristobal. Now I'd like to introduce our Assistant Vice President for Graduate Studies Sponsored Programs and Research, Dr. John Peterson. Thank you very much. It, uh, it gives me a lot of pleasure to see this group all get together because uh, it shows the strength of interest and uh, deep appreciation for heritage and culture and the museum uh, movement and so forth here in Guam by people on Guam and it's really great to see everyone here. A lot of people that were named should be and, and will be in the next couple of days. Uh, and, 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 uh, and it's really uh, wonderful that we've been able to host a visit from Jeremy Barnes, Director of the National Museum and Deputy Director Dr. Anna Labrador who have only been in place for a couple of years now and it's been a real breath of fresh air. The museum, it's, a, it's, a, it's very inspiring to see what's happening and, there's a new natural history museum being, uh, it's in the works, and the collections in the, in the, uh, the story of the Filipino people is going to be renewed. It's a very exciting time for museums in the region, because uh, I'm sure many of you will want to share with them <coughs> news about the Guam Museum, and they'll be eager to hear about it. Tomorrow morning, Dr. Labrador has a museum management session in the class dean's uh, uh, room in uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning. So please come to that if you'd like to uh, hear about some of those museum training issues. Um, the National Museum was, it, was imagined from the very beginning as a great international museum. It's really, really exciting that that was one of the first things in the minds of many Filipinos uh, with the revolution. And it was 1901. I mean, there were a lot of things going on politically. But that, that was, was imagined at that point in time, I think, was really significant. And uh, it was many years before it migrated toward its present location, but the buildings that they're in are very important uh, government buildings. One was the finance uh, building and one was the old Senate building, which had been designed by Daniel Burnham in 1918. So there's a tremendous amount of history uh, in the museum structure itself, not to mention what happened with research and exhibits. Uh, one story that I heard uh, many years ago about H. Holly Byer, who was one of the earliest uh, uh, anthropologists appointed to the museum, was uh, something that happened during the, uh, well, during the war. The Japanese occupation was ending. The United States forces were shelling Manila. We actually caused more damage to Manila than the Japanese had, so to say. 
Uh, but the building, and there's a picture of this building after the war on the museum website. And it's just a, a shell, right? But one of the things that the Japanese soldiers did as they were evacuating was they took all the boxes and bags of museum artifacts and stuffed them in the sandbags and threw them up in the doorways and windows as a means of protecting themselves against the invasion, right? Can you imagine, you who are museum specialists just are, must be cringing at that thought, you know? Well, anyway, after the uh, Japanese evacuated and after the building finally was returned to the museum, Holly Beyer went in and went through the sandbags and re completely reorganized the collection and uh, did it largely from memory because he had done most of the excavations. And so he, he excavated the sandbags that had been used during the, during the siege and, uh, and restored them to, uh, to order, at least as far as, as he could remember. They say he had a great memory. So uh, there's been a, a colorful history. I'm sure there are many more wonderful anecdotes like that to, uh, to resurrect, to excavate from the history of the museum. But uh, we'll hear it firsthand tonight from uh, Director Barnes, and we're just really, really pleased that uh, you both were able to come and look forward to hearing your comments. Thank you.
institutional profile. Uh, well, um, John was talking about our buildings in Manila, so you can see uh, the three main buildings all in yellow there. Um, on that left is the old uh, legislative building, more commonly known as the old Senate, and uh, that houses the National Art Gallery. On the right um, is the old Department of Finance building, which houses the uh, Museum of the Philippine People, which is the Anthropological and Archaeological Museum. And beyond is the Department of Tourism building, which is currently being vacated. And we've just uh, unveiled our new designs for a natural history museum um, that fulfills the master plan that has a uh,
Um, and we have a threefold mandate, as we like to call it, as an educational, scientific, and cultural institution that acquires, documents, preserves, exhibits, fosters scholarly study and public appreciation of works of art, specimens, and cultural historical artifacts representative of or unique to the cultural heritage of the Filipino people, wherever they are to be found, and the natural history of the Philippines. And we're mandated to establish, manage, and develop museums comprising our central complex in Manila, as well as regional locations, uh, regional museums and key locations around the country. So we manage and develop all our collections are considered national reference collections. And these are in the areas of cultural heritage, in arts, anthropology, archaeology, and natural history. So we really have these two main fields of collecting and consequently of in research. Um, of course, natural history uh, uh, pertaining to botany, zoology, geology, and paleontology. And the permanent research programs that are contained in our charter uh, relate to biodiversity, geological history, human origins, prehistoric and historical archaeology, maritime and underwater cultural heritage, ethnology, art history, and movable and immovable cultural properties of many kinds. And of course, as a museum, uh, we have our, the educational and public dissemination component of our work. So uh, appreciation of the collections and of our research um, is uh, spread to all our audiences through, of course, the whole range of uh, uh, public programs such as exhibitions, publications, seminars, training, outreach, technical assistance, and so on. A lot of work, but there's more. Um, we also serve as a regulatory and enforcement agency of the government with respect to a quite long series of cultural laws, including presidential proclamations, presidential decrees, republic acts, uh, commonwealth acts, and, and you know, laws that, that have existed since the early 20th century. And as I've said, we're responsible for various culturally significant property sites and reservations throughout the country, either directly or indirectly. Actually, the National Museum is uh, could be considered as quite a large landowner uh, as well. And um, lastly, we're the lead agency uh, every October, which has long been declared as Museums and Galleries Month. So we take that occasion to really promote the role of museums in society and, uh, you know, and, how, um, and how people can enjoy and access the information and knowledge contained in them. So our, our offices, of course, are in Manila. And, uh, and as I've said, the, the complex uh, comprises the National Art Gallery, the Museum of the Filipino People, and the National Planetarium. And in progress is the Museum of Natural History, and something that uh, is, is still on the drawing board, but is, I think, of special interest to everyone here in Guam and in the Marianas uh, and through Micronesia is the uh, Gallery Museum that uh, is being spearheaded by um, one of our one of our distinguished senators, um, uh, long-serving senators, uh, who has always taken a very special interest in the connection between Spain, Philippines, and Mexico. And, uh, and uh, we're collaborating on this uh, with him and our sister agency, the National Historical Commission. So for our regional museums and branches, we have 19. I think it might be easier to appreciate it here, the distribution throughout the Philippines ranging from Batanes uh, in the far north, uh, which are actually closer to Taiwan, uh, down to Holo in the Sulu archipelago in the south. And then Manila, as you can see, is very much our hub. So we're well distributed throughout the archipelago uh, as it happens, but at the same time, there are serious gaps in our network, and we're trying to uh, fill those. So I'm glad I added this slide, especially since uh, the Preservation uh, Trust is, is here, um, because this, I think uh, you are our, our counterpart uh, in this very important area of work. Um, under various laws, we declare national cultural treasures and important cultural properties, and within the established legal framework, regulate and ensure their protection and preservation on the part of the national government. So national cultural treasures, as you can Yes, are cultural properties that are unique, possess outstandingly significant or important value, either historically, culturally, or scientifically, uh, and that are really emblematic of the country or the Filipino nation. And important cultural properties are just kind of beneath that, you know, uh, very important but not sufficiently important to be a natural cultural treasure, uh, but are exceptional. And we, there, was, there used to be a lot of gray areas as to where we and our sister agencies uh, uh, draw the line. And a recent piece of legislation, the National Cultural Heritage Act of 2009, 
movable and immovable property pertaining to finite arts, and it made it clear that it includes all sorts of allied arts, but most importantly, its heritage, archaeology, anthropology, botany, geology, zoology, and astronomy, which uh, have, we're busy trying to create uh, uh, positions in the museum org chart for uh, astronomy, which are unfortunately in short supply in the Philippines. But, um, all right, and then mandated priorities, uh, of course, regarding these cultural properties, which, as we know, are classified as either movable or immovable, tangible or intangible, are their protection, preservation, documentation, study, and education about them. And then something that's been happening in the last couple of years, of course, is supporting tourism development and promotion. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the latest uh, Philippine tourism campaign, it's more common in the Philippines, uh, where <coughs> in other countries I've traveled to, uh, specifically around Southeast Asia, it's been all over CNN and everything like that. But you'll find it's a very strong cultural component that runs uh, throughout, um, throughout that campaign. And we're really being called upon by our uh, budget bureau and everything to demonstrate a more direct uh, as well as many indirect uh, contributions to economic development, specifically to tourism. And this means that we've had to work much harder to establish and manage more actively our stakeholder relationships and partnerships among agencies, local governments, and communities. <laughs> so here are just some examples of cultural properties. This is um, the best known of our intangible national cultural treasure, which is a, uh, an epic called the Hood Food. It's an epic of the Ifugao people, um, who of course uh, created the, the rice terraces uh, in the Cordillera, <coughs> and uh, it is um, it is a long chant that uh, usually revolves around uh, the harvesting of rice in the terraces. Uh, another intangible national cultural treasure in Mindanao this time is the Teranging epic, and then our old. Uh, pre-contact uh, syllabic scripts, some of which still uh, survive in various forms, to be mostly found in Palawan and Mindoro. And the logo of the museum, which you would have looked at well, before I started, uh, is based on the letter for uh, <coughs> the syllable for pa, uh, which uh, refers to pamana or heritage, which I think is the one buzzword that can summarize what the museum stands for. And then, of course, uh, in terms of removable and material national cultural treasures. We have the Rice Terraces, which are also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. We, this is one of our directly managed uh, site museums, uh, petroglyphs in a rock shelter in Angono, not too far from Manila. Again, some, stove, uh, some pe uh, petroglyphs back in, in the Cordillera, the mountain province, uh, together with stone calendars. Then, uh, burial caves with Mount Pai Verdain. Again, we have various sites that we directly administer in order to preserve these uh, burial caves. And then, probably most well known is our built heritage from the colonial era. Most famously, uh, this world heritage site in Hawaii, the Lobos Norte, the Church of San Agustin. Also, the Church of San Agustin in Intramuros, uh, Manila, uh, world heritage site also. And uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, Mestizo district in Viga, which is the best preserved uh, colonial town in the Philippines. And then going straight to the south, the Port Pilar in Zamboanga City, which is actually the National Museum in Zamboanga, and various churches in Cebu, in, uh, in uh, Cagayan Valley, in Muerto Vizcaya, back in Mindanao, on the island of Sitigor, on the island of Bohol. Bohol again, way up in the far north in Bataan, near Manila in Mahaihai in Laguna, on the island of Panay in Kapi, the Yavas Quezon where uh, uh, <coughs> Dr. Peterson and Akabal have uh, had a project with him, Sobawini again in Cagayan Valley in Isabella province, 
map drawn by our national hero, but they're resolved to an exile in, in Dolos. Uh, in, in, in Zadipa, this is the island of, uh, of, of Mindanao, uh, drawn in front of the church. And then more indigenous sort of architecture, um, such as uh, this Maranao uh, uh, chief's house, uh, known as the Kauai and Koroga. It's probably the last in, intact uh, um, structure of its kind that, uh, that we know of in, in Mindanao. So that is an urgent case for preservation. And then more contemporary uh, uh, cultural properties, such as the University of Santo Tomas, the Monumento a los Héroes de 1878 in Caloca City, and various watchtowers, provincial capital buildings, municipal buildings, and uh, more contemporary architecture, Santo Domingo Church. Then movable um, cultural properties, such as prehistoric stone tools, some of the earliest uh, uh, evidences of um, human activity. The famous Manungul secondary burial jar recovered from the Kalam Cave complex in Palawan, where Dr. Peterson was a few weeks ago. Um, the famous Kalatagan pot with that syllab syllabic script that I showed earlier. One of the very few uh, uh, evidences of, uh, of pre Hispanic writing. And uh, the equally well known Balanais, the ocean going uh, boats, the oldest of which dates to the 4th century, which uh, I guess we, is the best evidence for how you know, uh, the archipelago and the islands uh, in the Pacific, such as Guam, were peopled in the first place by the Austronesian. The oldest clock uh, uh, dated to the uh, 13th century burial shroud found in Banton. Again, it evokes designs that are, that are still in use today. And then paintings uh, that are mostly in the National Archive. Right. So we, you know, in, in a nutshell, uh, we are a general museum that um, focuses on all those aspects of cultural heritage and natural history. Uh, we, though we do have those very serious regulatory duties that cover the entire country, um, but at the same time, we're a scientific and research institution, and uh, and it's really in those areas that we try to forge strong collaborations uh, with institutions such as uh, the University of Guam, and the fields of collaboration, of course, in research, cover all our main areas of competency: so fine arts, archaeology, ethnology. Natural history. And then, of course, uh, being the agency of government that really is responsible for museum development, we also offer this as a field for collaboration to uh, help those organizations or individuals or groups who really want to establish or upgrade uh, museums and look after or, uh, or build collections. Of course, uh, we offer technical assistance for that purpose as well as to help design museum education and other public programs. And then in cultural properties management, of course many important cultural properties are in the private, private ownership. And so uh, you know, the Philippines, just like Guam, um, taking very seriously uh, principles of private versus public property. Um, you know, we, we have quite elaborate schemes to uh, incentivize uh, private owners of cultural property to really take appropriate steps preserve and afford access uh, to, to their property. And of course, uh, moving towards the forms of collaboration, everyone thinks immediately of exhibits and publications, and also content development for various platforms. Um, exchanges of all kinds, but specifically collections, research, uh, specialists, experts, uh, students, uh, all sorts of uh, warm bodies. Um, and then <coughs> all a whole range of joint research, technical and development projects and programs. So um, we've been doing some joint field work uh, and, and field schools or uh, training with, uh, with the university here. Um, but we also do consultancy and have programs of fellowships and friendships. And also something new, um, joint marketing so that uh, you know, people are aware of you know, a network of museums uh, that complement each other. Of course, uh, key considerations when we enter into um, any collaborations are 
course, that it's uh, well designed, uh, well designed collaboration that's relevant to uh, the mission that we're trying to carry out. And of course, funding and logistics are always key, um, and that you know there's proper planning and preparation, and of course, uh, adherence to all our standards and conventions in terms of uh, ethics and. Specifically uh, to our visit here in Guam, so the National Museum is really interested in learning, and here because it's our first visit, um, I guess you know uh, I should really approach uh, this from the point of view of listening to what everyone here might have to say or suggest, um, so that we can incorporate uh, this. I, I can't claim to have a robust idea of, of what what we can possibly enter into uh, at this stage. Um, but uh, I, I could certainly come up with a few ideas. Uh, certainly, I think we all acknowledge um, that the collective heritage of Guam and the Philippines is a very rich field, given its very wide breadth and scope that includes you know, all areas of anthropology, as well as political, economic, and natural history. Um, and this covers all periods, as far as I can see, from the Paleolithic. So while there may not be uh, Paleolithic um, uh, evidence of paleolithic habitation here in, in Guam uh, itself, of course, uh, paleolithic um, uh, evidence in the Philippines, uh, of course, is um, its prelude to the population of uh, islands in the Pacific, so very relevant. Um, and of course, Neolithic, the age of trade, up to our collective discovery uh, in 1521 by uh, Ferdinand Magellan. And I quickly started the period up to 1946, which is for the Philippines, the date of our independence from the United States. Um, and then, of course, a uh, big, you know, uh, a very rich shared history since 1946 of a quite different character um, in recent and contemporary times. But given this rich field in all of those aspects, uh, I find um, that its study and promotion uh, has been uh, relatively neglected, and I'll only speak, of course, for the Philippines. Um, but I'd like to know if, if you agree on the part of uh, Guam. Um, you know, I my belief is, of course, that the Philippines is both an Asian and a Pacific country, but uh, the bias is clearly being towards our Asian uh, uh, kind of heritage or collective uh, uh, origins rather than the Pacific. Um, and these days, and I was just talking with uh, our uh, consul general, um, you know, uh, the specific nature of our uh, of our development uh, has, you know, uh, even in the economic sphere, been largely put on the back burner um, in the last what, 10, 15 years. Uh, bodies like APEC were much more talked about in the Philippines than they are now, and the focus really is on integrating with the Southeast Asian community. Um, so this might be a symptom of this kind of um, <coughs> lack of appreciation of, of, of the Philippines as a Pacific rather than uh, Southeast Asian country. Um, and thus, you know, uh, I, I've done a survey of our uh, uh, research in the museum, um, and it's really almost exclusively focused on the western rather than the eastern or Pacific side of the archipelago. Now that might have to do with the fact that um, the eastern Part of Luzon, the main island uh, of the Philippines, is quite remote and inaccessible, except for parts such as uh, uh, Baler in Aurora province, and uh, and uh, perhaps that hasn't been conducive to a lot of field work. Uh, I don't know. That's probably one of many reasons. And um, socially, and I, you know, I hope uh, this is well taken. I, I feel that Guam is from by Filipinos being viewed popularly as a staging post of the destination in itself, for tourism, uh, or visiting the cultural sites of the pier, or even on the part of scholars as an area of, um, for research. So, uh, of course, um, my conclusion for that is, from that is that there is a need uh, on the part of the Philippines and within the Philippines, the National Museum, to push to fill those gaps on uh, social and scientific research um, on the Pacific side of the Philippines in natural history, uh, anthropology, and archaeology. Uh, and one example is biological anthropo 
fresh area that hasn't been well studied in other parts of the Philippines. And, uh, and, and also, um, there's a lot of prevailing interest now uh, in the Philippines and in Mexico and Spain um, in promoting the heritage of the Manila Acapulco galleon trade. Um, and there's a lot of talk of bringing in all the countries, all the modern day countries, who are involved, historically involved with that trade. Uh, unfortunately, people keep forgetting about inviting Guam and the Marianas. Uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to involve themselves in this process of um, how to uh, make the heritage of the Galleon trade relevant to our communities and societies. And so that should, you know, that bringing Guam into, into this initiative, uh, I think is quite important to be um, incorporated. And yeah, this is just a graphic that I, I, I really like. It really shows uh, the centrality of Guam and the Mariana. Uh, to the Galleon route. I think the yellow, the yellow line is the route going out to Acapulco, and the red line, which is a bit more uh, <laughs> chaotic, is coming in. I, might, I, I think that's, that's right, or mm -hmm. it might be the other way around. So again, just to take that point a bit further, um, perhaps uh, the two and a half centuries of the Galleon trade um, and the exchange and connection embodied in that can serve to help us all invigorate awareness of the shared heritage of Guam and the Philippines and of other countries. And uh, this, together with everything I, I mentioned prior, um, leads us to really consider in the museum developing a <coughs> specific research program precisely to study the links of the eastern side of the Philippines with Guam and other Pacific islands. And a lot of the groundwork for this, I, I think, um, can be uh, attributed to the work that has uh, been done by Dr. Peterson and I, a lot of this <coughs> in, uh, in archaeology through field schools and excavations in Cebu, Ipugao, Quezon, and respectively uh, in Palawan. Uh, I'm very glad that Dr. Peterson took uh, the opportunity to visit the Underground River and parts of central Palawan. Um, to see if there's uh, you know, potential sites for uh, Neolithic, where is Dr. Oh, Neolithic habitation of technology, yeah. And uh, we, we were just discussing when we met last night uh, that uh, there's you know, large potential for a very exciting excavation that would involve uh, students and archaeologists here in Guam. And so that's, that's very gratifying. Um, and, uh, and then further, um, the research project that we can design together between the Philippines and Guam uh, could also drive museum and heritage collaborations, um, such as the transmission of knowledge, uh, practices of keeping objects, classifying them, how we develop systems of significance of objects, and museum practices across the Philippines and the Pacific could be developed to better integrate our local sensibilities and environmental conditions through staff development and uh, exchanges and creating online resources. And, I, and something that I feel personally strong about, um, because a lot of my work has been on built heritage, um, is that <coughs> partnerships can be forged to, uh, regarding the documentation, preservation, and restoration of cultural sites. Um, I, I, I think both Guam and Philippines we suffered grievously in 1945, and uh, a lot of our material of, of built heritage was, was wiped out. Um, and they you know, uh, and I think I can also speak for the both of us, but certainly on the Philippines, that our record of, of preserving even the memory of those uh, structures, let alone uh, reconstructing them uh, faithfully, has been quite patchy, um, and in some cases really remains to be undertaken. Uh, and I here highlight particularly Spanish colonial structures, which is an obvious common element between our two. To uh, uh, what countries. Um, so, really, in closing, the potential range and diversity of collaborative projects in the areas of our competence is um, very large and can be harnessed to strengthen ties and mutual understanding for the benefits of our stakeholders and community. Um, as a government agency, the National Museum of the Philippines strives very hard to do its part in cultural diplomacy, in enhancing strengthening mutual understanding. We've done a lot of this um, in Southeast Asia. Prior to coming here, I was in Bangkok, and we're forging a Southeast Asian museum network. Uh, and there are many mechanisms for us to get together and partner and collaborate and dialogue. And it would be great if we could extend this, this effort um, to you know, a neighbor and a, a close, uh, very, you know, a close, uh, uh, well, very close neighbor. You know, as Guam, and, uh, and uh, I think um, this will be very well received uh, in the Philippines, and from what I've got, 
answer so that um, I can also learn what the concerns or uh, clarifications um, anyone here might have uh, so that you know, we can uh, share from the National Museum of so Thank you very much.
try something a bit different, which we're not too comfortable with yet, but really going out in the popular media. Uh, you know, kind of um, doing everything short of singing and dancing to you know, make people feel that it's really their actual view and it's a place that, you know, um, that uh, they can really come and enjoy. I think we're making some progress. Um, specifically to, to, to the National Museum, though, uh, uh, our focus right now is upgrading our infrastructure and our facilities so that when people come, they are turned off by gloom and dinginess and, uh, and uh, non-functioning comfort rooms and all of that. So we're making sure we get that right, get it up to the standards that people expect, say, of a, of a shopping mall, and as you may know, Filipinos love our, uh, we love our shopping malls and they're <laughs> probably the best shopping malls in the world. And so that's what people are used to now. So we want to get the experience or the comfort of visitors to the museum up to that level. Uh, and then um, as we're doing that, we're now testing a few little pilot programs so that once we've got the infrastructure in place, we can really roll out the marketing and promotions and have the programs in place that will make people bring kids and, or their or their or the or the seniors or you know, all, all, all types of uh, sectors. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Barnes, for your presentation. I just have a quick question in terms of your, the patronage to the National Museum. Is is it more geared towards the local population being able to go and appreciate what you have to offer, or predominantly for the visitors that come in and visit the facility. Right. Um, well, our, man, our mandate, of course, is focused on, uh, on, on, on Filipinos. But uh, uh, if done well, um, of course, you, know, you should make the museum intelligible and accessible to, to, to foreign travelers. Uh, I guess we're, we're lucky. That uh, the lingua franca of museums in the Philippines is English, and so we don't have to make too much of an extra effort. In, in fact, the extra effort is reaching Filipinos who are not so well educated in English. Um, so, uh, for less effort, we actually reach more foreign foreign visitors um, than we do uh, uh, the full extent of our own society. So, um, we don't have too much trouble, and because of our long colonial history, a lot of the cultural heritage that we have in our collections um, is immediately accessible to Westerners. Uh, and because of the strong Chinese and Southeast Asian influences, again, quite accessible to uh, the people of, of the region there. Um, and uh, of course to uh, Latin Americans and Americans in general. So uh, we're kind of lucky Philippines has always been at a crossroads, so in, uh, in promoting our cultural heritage, most people find it uh, quite accessible. Yeah. But the actual challenge is reaching um, as, as deeply as possible into our own society to reach those people who feel that the museum is uh, it's, uh, not for them, you know, it's, it's uh, something for the elite or the highly educated or the more affluent and to really you know, reach them. I don't want to use the word disadvantage or marginalized, but because it's actually the bulk of uh, Filipinos. Um, but, you know, to really reach into, into the everyday uh, families and, and, uh, and people, not only in Manila, of course, but people from out of Manila, you know, who uh, we want to demystify the museum <coughs> and, uh, and make it something that, um, that they feel you know, they can be quite comfortable uh, so we're lucky that way. I, I, it's a good question, Senator, because um, uh, as I said, I've just been in Bangkok, and it, you know, it's quite. I think they find it much harder making their museums accessible to foreign visitors, as well to even Filipinos or something, um, because of the language barrier and uh, and the fact that theirs is a very rich but um, um, distinct. Uh, Culture, <coughs> which we have to, which we as visitors have to work extra hard to understand and appreciate beyond the surface or superficial aesthetic value to really understand the significance of objects and their meaning to ties. We have to really be interested in the first place, I think, to, to get to that effort. Dr. Schwab? I'm not sure how long Guam has been administered out of the Philippines during colonial times, right? Yes, um, from but, but well, if you want to learn more about it, right, when our race had to go to ordination to Cebu and the uh, governor had to get the order from Cebu, where would you direct us to the 
myself personally with uh, all the sources, but um, maybe I can refer that question to Ricardo. Dr. Madrid is uh, newly arrived here at the University at, at Mark. He's a specialist in the Spanish era sources. And I 
that's what's a really site, you know, President Aquino. Under his administration, uh, the budget of the museum has um, has increased uh, tenfold, literally tenfold. Uh, when I when I came in, the budget was 120 million pesos, which is barely three million dollars. Three million dollars back in 2010, and now it's uh, it's over 30 million dollars, um, over a billion pesos. Most of that for infrastructure operates, but even our operating budget has increased fourfold, which means we can hire more security guards to, to keep the collection safe and the visitors safe. Uh, we can keep the air conditions on, keep air, air conditioners on for, for longer to preserve, help preserve the collection. Janitors to keep the, 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 the comfort rooms clean, make sure there's always toilet paper. You know, the little, little things are what really seem to influence the experience of visitors. And so we, we're trying to also generate that consciousness of attention to detail uh, and all of that. So um, uh, we've we've made a lot of progress, and again, I have to really cite the strong support of the Aquino administration, um, and uh, and that's why I can stand you here for, before you here without blushing to really say that we're in a position now to share our experiences and um, our learning, especially over the last couple of years, with anyone here who's interested. Um, in terms of you know, museum development or enhancement. And uh, I'm very excited by what I've heard about this uh, project to um, establish a uh, uh, you know, full-fledged museum here in Rwanda. And, uh, and uh, we're certainly um, happy to uh, discuss what possible assistance we can give, but even the tomorrow, tomorrow assistance. And I, I think we'll be discussing this in uh, <laughs> Anis Museum Management Workshop. Tomorrow, which I'd like to echo John's invitation. If anyone of you would like to attend, uh, that would be great. Doctor, it's pretty impressive. Two point million, thirty years ago. The clock could be seven. The clock could be certainly capable. Maybe to probably even have more because we have the agencies here. Transform the 
what can, I mean, we, I think we have broadly the same kind of historiography. I might be glossing over too many things, so without thinking, but, but surely it's worth a good look and see what, what can be shared. Um, well, as I said at the outset, we were called the National Museum in 1933, and we were still directly administered by the United States at that time. Um, we only began the Commonwealth in 1935. Huh. So, I don't know, they let it be called the National Museum. Well, prior to 1933, we were called the Philippine Museum, the Philippine Museum and Library, and then prior to around 1917, we were the Insular Museum. So um, I guess there was a kind of a trend. And uh, maybe in 1933, they, the, the prospect of Commonwealth status was already uh, on the horizon, so they just let it happen. Well, I'm not too sure as to the origins of the you know, official nomenclature. But um, if people feel it's a national museum, question I had is when I saw the museum building, they looked just like uh, buildings in the United States built in the first part of the 20th century. Do sure. you think that's part of the reason that Filipinos have a hard time relating to the, the museum? Is that it just doesn't look like their museum? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I think a lot of the public buildings in the Philippines um, were built during the American era in the kind of neoclassical style. Uh, so I think they've just been become ubiquitous. You see them everywhere in every town. Uh, and throughout Manila, though less since so many were destroyed in the war. But you know, schools, colleges, universities, uh, hospitals, train stations. City halls, uh, hotels—they're all, all like that. So um, I think it's kind of part of the Americanization of the Filipino, which you know is now taken for granted. So I don't think people stand back and say, "Well, that doesn't look Filipino." It's just taken for granted, especially those buildings which are considered rather iconic. Yeah, I mean, you should see our post office. It looks like the Lincoln Monument. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a well—it's a well-loved building. Yes, uh, uh, the buildings were huge. I mean, it looks huge in the pictures. Right. Yeah. And they are quite large, yeah. And when you were talking about the, the old treasury building having a lot of your uh, historical stuff, how large is the Austrian Museum exhibit in that, in that building? The Austrian Museum history oh. exhibit. Yeah, well, um, currently uh, we have a permanent exhibit um, that won't be permanent for too much longer um, on the origins of the Filipino people, which details the, the whole post Tunisian expansion. Um, and that's contained in about a 400 square meter gallery, just one gallery. It's, a, it's quite a compact uh, narrative, but it's something that uh, it's been there for about 15 years, the exhibit, and it's something that we planning to redo and expand, maybe give it an entire floor uh, because of the wealth of artifacts and uh, again, uh, uh, new interpretations and new research. Um, we think that what we should do is not give people any more an official version, but um, a wealth of information with, which can be interpreted um, in different ways by different people. So we're looking to give that about a thousand square meters uh, or, or more, not too sure yet. Um, of space. Uh, we've, since 1998, when the existing 400 square meter exhibit was set up, um, we've, got, we've had a lot of uh, uh, projects both on land and underwater which um, yield important insights. And so we'd be keen to put those on display um, in addition to what's already there. Please come and visit uh, next year in Manila. We'd be happy and uh, 
we expect to see on your desk. <laughs> <laughs> and in the diorama of Guam. Yes. So thank you very much.